Happy New Year everyone! This is the third and final part of Video Camera Basics. Today we are going to go into detail about the setting of ISO. This is the final setting that you need to know to understand the exposure triangle. Therefore, once you know it, you will be able to shoot in manual. If you haven't already checked out parts one and two, please go check them out so you will understand how to shoot in manual. ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light, whether it be for film or a digital sensor. To put simply, a higher ISO value means that the camera's sensor is more sensitive to light, and that a lower ISO value means that the camera's sensor is less sensitive to light. As you increase your ISO value, you will notice that your image appears brighter, and vice versa. Although, there is a trade-off to this setting. The higher you increase your ISO, the more digital noise will appear in your image. Therefore, the general rule is that the lower your ISO value is, the more cleaner your image will appear. As we all know, there are so many different camera brands and camera models, which all contain different sensors. Each sensor is unique, and each has different ISO performance abilities. Now you are probably wondering, what exactly do you mean? As sensor technology is continually improving, newer sensors in general are able to have cleaner images at higher ISO values. There is also an interesting point to make. If you take two full frame sensors, one being 42 megapixels while the other is 12 megapixels, which sensor do you think will perform at higher ISO values to give you a cleaner image? The answer is the 12 megapixel sensor. Now you are probably wondering, but why Anthony? The easiest way to put it is that the pixels on the 12 megapixel sensor are larger to fill up the sensor. Since the pixels are larger, they can illuminate with light much easier. Obviously the trade-off is resolution, although for video, a 12 megapixel sensor is more than enough to create a 4K image. This is what Sony have done with their A7S line of video-centric camera models, making them low-light beasts. So why is it important to understand the abilities of your camera's sensor? To understand how far you can push your ISO values in order to render a usable image. What I would suggest is to test your camera in different lighting scenarios, varying your ISO to understand what is the max ISO value you can use to achieve a usable image. I have personally learned the hard way of the limitations of one of my cameras. I hadn't worked out how far I can push the ISO before the image becomes unusable. I basically pushed the ISO way too far in a low light scene where the noise became distracting for the viewer. I have also learned that in most circumstances, ISO performance is better for larger sensors. This is simply due to the fact that more light is able to be absorbed onto the sensor due to the larger surface area. I have also found that ISO performance on a particular sensor is different for both photo and video. Hence, it is important to experiment if you are a hybrid shooter. I have generally found that you can push your ISO more for photo rather than video. If you are recording using a log picture profile, it is important to understand what the base ISO is. For example, for C-Log3, Canon recommends to use an ISO value of 800. Basically, this is the company's recommendation to get the least amount of noise and maximum dynamic range. Now, if you are lucky enough to have a camera with dual native ISO, you will have a further advantage when in low light situations. Basically, you will have two ISO values, one being low and one being high, where your image will appear at its cleanest. For example, if the second native ISO of your camera is at ISO 12800, it will appear cleaner when at 12800 rather than when at 10,000. Now let me give you a suggestion. Lighting is everything. It may be better for you to invest in a continuous video light rather than buying a really expensive low light beast of a camera. Using a high quality light in your image using that old camera of yours is much more appealing than using a low light beast of a camera in poor lighting conditions. Now that you understand the final piece of the jigsaw puzzle known as the exposure triangle, you can now officially shoot in manual. Experiment and practice with your camera constantly to understand its strengths and weaknesses. 
work out your camera's limitations and determine how you will overcome them. If you have any questions related to this topic, please comment on this video and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you miss parts one and two of Video Camera Basics, please click the links here. Please like and subscribe if you found this video useful as it will help support this channel for me to create more content for you. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one.